So let's say that you work for an e-commerce company, a new marketing manager comes in and tries redoing the existing email campaign to boost customer conversion rates. After launching the new email journey, the next few weeks, the user's con customer conversion rate goes up from 40% to 43%. Mm -hmm. However, a CEO points out that just a few months ago, the conversion rate was already at 45% before slowly dipping down to 40% uh, as it mm -hmm. was uh, before, right? So how would you actually investigate if the new email campaign actually caused the increased conversion versus just a fluke? Okay, so before diving in, I just want to clear up some portions of of this problem so uh when you guys say you launch a new email campaign in the next few weeks user to customer conversion rate goes from 40 percent to 43 percent is 40 to 43 percent in general or is this for that campaign specifically uh it's in general right so general? basically okay. yeah the store has let's say you know a thousand you know users uh and gets a thousand users a week and then basically 40 percent of them convert towards buying something um and then after the email campaign uh for the next few weeks 43 percent of them converted to buying something after the new email journey right yeah okay and then uh so just so i understand this also better uh what exactly was this new email campaign was it just like uh did you guys didn't offer any promotion or you guys just uh just sent another reminder to your email list. What, what, what was the content of that email campaign, campaign? Yeah, so let's say that initially it was just, you know, a basic customer journey or email journey, basically after like one day, after three days, after five days, seven days, right? The user gets like an email talking about, you know, go buy something, right? Every single email. And then the new marketing manager comes in, basically does some segmentation, right? Only sends, maybe creates like three different flows uh, to try to boost, you know, customer conversion rates that way. Cool. And then how often, how often is this uh, marketing manager or how I'm pretending you're the marketing manager, right? Uh, yeah. How long, <laughs> how long do you guys, how long do you guys, uh, how many email campaigns do you guys run, run out, uh, say per uh, year? Uh, so let's say that this was just like an email journey that got sent to every single user right after they signed up. So it's like on a continual basis. So basically every single user will get this email journey, but then the marketing manager changes so that they would all get like this new segmented, uh, email journey, but okay. every single user would still get one. Yeah. Okay. So every, every, every new user that signs up, they yeah, also be getting exactly. one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then, so yeah, I actually have a lot of questions here. Um, okay. Yeah. So did, did any of those other metrics change? So did like user signups change? Was that around the same, uh, or like say did, did, uh, people landing on the homepage, did that change? Did any of those things change? Yeah, potentially. I guess if you were in this situation, what would you investigate first? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you mind if I take like 30 seconds? I'm going to just kind of give you a quick structure and then we'll, uh, we can dive in. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. So I think the first thing I would want to analyze is uh, past email campaigns. So I, I, I just want to look at directionally in past email campaigns that were similar, like what, what was like the directional impact on conversion? So that, that's the first thing I'd be curious about just to understand how well past email campaigns have performed. I guess actually before I dive into that, do you want me to make assumptions here or do you wanna, is there any context on any past email campaign performance? Yeah, so I guess like what kind of metrics are you looking for? Um, mm -hmm. Is this specifically like one-off email campaigns or is this just like uh, the existing email journey that I was talking about? Yeah, let's say like the current or the old email journey, uh, yeah. how long was it run for? When you guys switch to this old this that email journey what was the impact there yeah so let's say that it was always running um it started running probably you know for a year before the new marketing manager came in right and then um in terms of like conversion rates you know let's say that it you know it basically it was implemented and then you know has kind of like standard you know kind of you know, open rates, click through rates and other metrics that we can think about. Okay. And then you mentioned that it was around 40%, uh, kind of when we last checked before, yeah. before you launched the new campaign, uh, is there any info on say maybe like the variance of this, does this usually range from 40 to 41% or is this usually, uh, 35 to 45%? 
Yeah, so let's say that historically it's been as low as like 39, 30, 32% maybe even, um, mm -hmm. and then as high as 45% before as well. And so this is um, specifically, you know, on a uh, week by week basis. Okay, so this is like not a, so generally that per is around 45% and it can get as low as, as 32%. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay, that's, that's very helpful. Um, is there any kind of seasonality with this conversion rate or does it usually stay stable throughout the year? Yeah, so let's say that it might be, yeah, pretty seasonal. Like, so maybe one to two months a year, maybe like November, Christmas, you know, people are more intent on like buying and then potentially, you know, in like the summer months, people will have higher intent, but without sales, there's probably like no, you know, uh, not a big like intent towards purchasing as well. Okay. And then when did this new campaign launch? Let's say that the new campaign launched in the, like, the hot season, so November and Christmas, potentially. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, you said and uh, then okay. hot during hot season. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe uh, continued, basically started in Christmas, and then now is in, like, January or something, where it's, like, not as, uh, not as hot anymore. Okay. So it started during the hot season. So it, it was already, like, people were already buying more uh when you started this email campaign so okay makes sense then okay cool um okay so i think that that's helpful for context on uh so i, I mean i think in general what i would want to do is just first like, understand the nature of uh conversion rate and i i would the other thing i'd want to also make sure of is uh the total number of counts so like for the email signups uh i, mm -hmm. I, I want to make sure that denominator is large enough if it is very small that can cause this percentage to be very unstable. So yeah. uh, that's probably something else I'd want to make sure of. So that, that's like a good segue into the next two where, uh, were there any changes in say, like more people signing up uh, over the, because it, in, in reality, if the, even if the conversion rate went down, if you're getting more signups, you're still probably making more, uh, getting more revenue overall, because you're just making up for it and getting more signups. So w was there any changes in signups or traffic or did that still, stay stable yeah so let's say that during the hot christmas season there was more people that uh, as users were just like kind of signing up basically okay yeah and the user signups like so let's say like emails per you know week is like a thousand so potentially you know there could be some variance okay okay so more people are actually coming during this time of the year than usual so there's more signups yep okay cool um so i think what i i'd probably want to do is in that case, uh, I, th I think I'd probably, for, if you have given this, you guys have a high enough count, we would just want to, I think conversion rate can kind of adjust for those counts. So we can still look at conversion rate. Uh, I think I wanted to just look at those counts just to make sure it's not going to influence, unduly influence the results, but at conversion rate should adjust for, uh, I should like normalize for the total number of people coming in. Yeah. That's helpful. I'll also say that assuming that uh, people at this time later time of the year they're uh, more intent to purchase so they probably maybe get some christmas money maybe that's something that could cause us to be more likely to purchase so that's like another consideration so i think the first thing i would want to actually do is running running an a b test is probably like the gold standard here like if if we, if yeah. we can run an a b test i'd probably want to do this so i guess the question is uh, are we able to run an A-B test or not? Um, let's say that we are first. Uh, what would you run the A-B test on? And then yeah, so not later. Yeah, yeah so I, I think if, if we run an A-B test, we just use the target metric as the conversion rate. Yeah. And then I, I think theoretically, we'd want to just have a mechanism to assign new people who sign up uh, into, say, treatment or control. So we'd probably do, do some random assignment of signups into treatment and control and i guess like the the easiest way i can think of right now is you just do uh an alternating so like uh, i gotta know this person now you know signs up they're in treatment next person's in control and ideally that would kind of that would control for the any kind of confounding factors so we can just yep. do like alternating assignment or we can do coin flip okay and then yeah and then i think after that we would uh 
we'd probably want to do some power analysis, understand, you know, how long we need to run this experiment for, and then what is the, the power. experiment exactly, actually? So we would have uh, treatment users and then control assigned control. And then in this treatment, we would have, we basically would have the new email drip campaign and then the control mm -hmm. would be the old email drip campaign. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So let's say that we can't maybe test then because we don't have infrastructure to do it. Is there anything we could do to analyze this now? Yeah. So I think the first thing I would do then if I can't run an A-B test, uh, I'll, I'll, draw, I'll do something called a directed acyclic graph. So what this, what this graph is supposed to do is uh, we want to map out all the different confounding variables that can impact uh, our experiment here. So yeah. for example, like what I just laid out, people later in the year are more intent to purchase. And so maybe that can influence their conversion rate and not the email campaign. So like example would be intent to purchase or somebody is, let's say is 30, they probably have more disposable income than somebody who is 20, right? So a, those are just examples of potential confounding variables. And I think the idea here is we wanna just map out what are all the different confounding variables that could be affecting our metric of conversion rate. This is gonna be more of an art than a science. Not, we're not gonna be get it perfect, but uh, this will actually help us do any kind of analysis afterwards. So typically okay. with the A-B test, uh, randomization will just solve for this, but because we can't do that, we'll need to figure out another way of doing it. So should I just assume that we already launched this email campaign, right? So how do we retroactively analyze this, right? Yep. Okay. So I think assuming we already launched this campaign, uh, this is this this would, would be what I call like a natural experiment. So uh, we're retroactively analyzing what happened. So I think the first thing I would wanna look at for number one, solution. Uh, so there's a there's a technique called interrupted time series. So if we look at actually conversion rate data, essentially an interrupted time series is when some event happened and inter quote unquote interrupts the time series. Uh, and it turns it into basically a pre and post. So I probably want to just do a quick pre post check afterwards. And then okay. I can run, say, an OLS regression with this interruption as a feature into OLS. And then I would add all the confounding variables. And then with this, uh, I would look at, say this interruption, kind of the actual quote unquote uh, p-value and the effect to actually determine if there was some causal effect from this exact interruption here. That's the first thing I would try. Gotcha. Uh, there's another uh, thing, technique called causal impact. It was created by Google. And the idea behind this is you have your pre-intervention time series. And then what you would do is you would basically create a, um, it uses an underlying Bayesian structural time series model. And what it does is say in your pre-period, it's gonna create a time series forecast. So it's gonna create a forecast of uh, the original time series. And it's gonna measure that forecast against what actually happened. So the idea is that you can actually take the forecast and compare it against uh, actuals. And that difference would would essentially be the effect of whatever you did there. Gotcha. Cool. And okay. Okay. I can keep going too. Do you want me to keep going or we can go to the next step? Yeah, let's do one more. <laughs> okay. Um, so the, the other one that we have is we have say synthetic controls. Okay, so I would say like if we're analyzing a natural experiment, uh, we would need a subset of users who were never exposed to the treatment. So depends on how what, what's already been done. If there was mm -hmm. a set like a market that this uh, email came, campaign was not launched in, that would actually be a perfect candidate for a control group. Gotcha. And what synthetic control does is it basically takes this control group, it'll reweight it some sort of way, it'll like reweight it, and then it'll uh, create this quote unquote synthetic control time series, very similar to causal impact, but just in a in a different in a different way. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, okay. So I'd probably go through those and then, and then after like analyzing it, typically uh, most of these techniques should give you some sense of a confidence interval. 
And depending on what the confidence interval looks like, if it was the 95% confidence interval was like minus 39% plus 45% or yeah, plus, yeah, it's like, it's going to be like this. Mm -hmm. If it looked like this, I probably wouldn't make that conclusion. Uh, however, if it looks something like this, you said it was originally 40%, right? So if it was like 41, yeah, then yeah, I might, I might feel confident in saying that this new e email campaign actually made an improvement. Okay. Cool. Any so, other questions? Uh, no.